Good morning, everybody. Greetings from uh, ESIC Medical College and uh, Hospital Hyderabad. At the outset, I would like to thank the organizing committee for giving me this opportunity. Coming into the topic, human-induced climate change is the greatest health threat of 21st century. Earth's temperature has increased by 0.8 degrees in the last 100 years, more so in the last 50 years, and it is expected to raise by 2.6 to 4.8 degrees if no stringent measures are taken. Global warming is due to the greenhouse effect. Human activities like increased burning of fossil fuel, deforestation has led to generation of, that is increased generation of carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, fluorocarbons. These gases uh, trap the heat and thereby raising the uh, global temperature. The measurement to uh, the generation of these gases is measured by an entity called carbon footprint, which is expressed as tons of carbon dioxide equivalent or TCO2. So health sector, global health sector is contributing to around 4.4% of global net emissions. If healthcare was a country, then it would have been the fifth highest generator of greenhouse gases. More than 50% of the world's generation of greenhouse gases from the healthcare sector comes from United States, China, and European Union. India is contributing to around 2%. So we very well know the impact of global warming on the uh, human health, but more so if we concentrate on the renal health, we have been witnessing the epidemics of CKD. Of in people who are working in hot atmospheres, there is increased admissions uh, due to AKI in the, uh, heat, because of the heat strokes, there is increased incidence of nephrolithiasis. And increased heat leads to increased rainfall, thereby you have an increased AKIs due to malaria and dengue because of vector borne. Then it is said that for every one degree increase in temperature, there would be about 0.9% increase in the admissions for renal disorders. And as per WHO, after 2030, uh, they're going to be more than 2.5 lakh deaths attributed due to heat stress, malnutrition, malaria, and diarrheal illness. Now let's see the other way around. What is the impact of dialysis on the environment? Yes, it poses a major ecological challenge. It is a very resource-hungry procedure. Two million patients are undergoing dialysis across the world. And each patient, at an average of three dialysis sessions per week, that is 156 per year, that comes to 300 million dialysis per year across the globe. So let's see the resources. Water at the rate of 500 liters per session leads to 150 billion liters. Power at the rate of 12 kilowatts per hour, 14.4 billion and waste at the rate of 2.5 kgs per kg comes to 750 million. Please note these huge numbers and just multiply by two because by 2025, the number of dialysis patients is going to increase to 4 million. Now, the carbon footprint of each dialysis is around 10.2 tons per patient per year, which is more than two times an average person generates. And a simple analogy could be one session of dialysis emission is equal to an automobile drive of 238 kilometers. So this is the pollution we are generating by each session of HT. So we are in this vicious cycle where healthcare services is generating more healthcare pollution, thereby leading to more diseases. So the Three R's, the famous R's of environment con uh, conservation, which is reduce, reuse, and recycle. But in dialysis sector, the fourth R is added, which is repair, it is an antidote to our, through our society. Let's see how we can apply these three R's, uh, three R's in these three zones. Before we go further, I would like to honor Professor ja uh, John Agar, who is acknowledged as the inventor of concept of green nephrology and ecodialysis. So first coming to the water. So let's walk through your dialysis. Each dialysis, dialysate is set at 500 ml per minute. That comes to 120 liters per session. Uh, usually ROs have a reject rate of two thirds. 
So to generate 500 ml of dialysate, source water is required is 1.5 liters, that is 360 liters per session. So adding a prime uh, water for priming, rinsing, everything, it is calculated to be around 500 liters per session. Now let's see this, for each session, 4 hour session, around 360 liters of water, source water, after passing through various stages of filtration, softener, then reaches the RO plant, then here 120 liters is going to the machine and 250 liters is rejected. This word reject is a misnomer because it's a highly purified water falling within the limits of set by WHO for portable water. Suppose uh, 250 liters per session, suppose in a unit, uh, 100 sessions are going, in a day, in a, going on in a day, that is 25,000 liters of purified water, we are just uh, put wasting into a drain. Can we really afford it today? Uh, in today's times, when 10% of the world's population is living in serious uh, water shortage and water scarcity will be so huge in near future that as uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam has professed, that future wars will be over water. There will be no more boundaries. Water bodies will be your new boundaries. So how do we reduce it? Uh, this dialysate of 500 ml was set somewhere in 1960s, which probably must have been optimal at that time. But with modern dialyzers, better designing, where uh, there is a better flow distribution in the dialysate compartment, we can expect uh, good clearance with a low dialysate rate. In fact, it is said, shown that 90% of the maximum solute clearance can be achieved when dialysate flow rate is equal to blood flow rate. So, even if it's at around 1.2 times the blood flow rate, we can be confident that we can get good clearances. And today's times, uh, setting a dialysate flow at 800 ml is normal rational. And in fact, a randomized crossover study has shown that reducing the dialysate flow from 500 to 400 had no impact on KTBV, interdialytic weight gain, blood pressure, but it indeed saved 25 liters per session. So how do you reuse this water? In Geelong, Australia, in Dr. Aga's uh, unit, they have redirected this to central sterilizing, redirected the reject RO water to central sterilizing department for steam generation, janitor stations, toilet flushes, hospitals, parks. And even in France, they did the same thing, and they showed that they could save around 1.2 million liters per year. In Chang et al, they have diverted to fish tanks and saved 10,000 to 12,000 liters per year. And in some units, they have represented it to the RO plant again in the closed loop. You have to rationalize your RO plant. Modern RO plants where they, there is less amount of reject to 20%, should, you should upgrade your RO plant to that. Avoid oversized water softeners because it consumes more water for filter backwashing. You can use two RO plants in series where the reject of one RO plant can act as an inlet to the second RO plant, thereby it drastically reduces your reject water. In uh, even the effluent dialysis, which uh, it goes down the drain in some countries like arid countries where there is a severe water scarcity, Taris et al. has shown that even if this effluent water treated with ultra filtration and RO techniques can again be reused for the irrigation. Technically, effluent is rich with urea, nitrates. It can be, they thought it can be used for the agriculture, but it can be potentially contaminated with viral fragments. So they did this and they found it was much cheaper for them than desalinating the seawater. So uh, next is peritoneal dialysis. Dialysis at, uh, is at 6 to 12 liters per day, but how much source water is used to create this pure water dialysis is not known. And, but it can be assumed that several liters of source water is used to generate this. And this dialysate comes in plastic, and creation of 1 kg of plastic requires around 180 liters of water. And the carbon footprint is 1.4 tons, which is definitely low, but it, it's a false low because here they have not calculated the carbon impact of the pharmaceutical use and transport uh, required to transport the dialysate. Then the next thing is the waste. Head to head, a dialysis bed generates three times more waste than the volume created by a general hospital bed. 
At 2.5 kgs waste per HD session, that is 390 kgs per patient per year, out of which 101 kgs is PVC. Then CAPD, PD definitely produces more plastic waste at 600 kgs per patient per year and out of which 343 is PVC. So what is this PVC? Polyvinyl chloride. It is very hazardous because it got a very high chloride content and vinyl chloride monomer is a potent carcinogen. PVC is blended to make it flow uh, flexible. It is blended with plasticizers called DEHPs. Uh, it is, in fact, DHP is the most common plasticizer we see in medical devices, be it ND tubes, IV tubes, dialysis tubes, all types. So this DHP leaches out of this device and comes into the fluids and then enters into the human system. Then another problem with PVC is that at the level of disposal. A via a disposal via incineration leads to generation of dioxins, furans, and these toxins with DHP can cause a variety and harmful chemical eff uh, efforts on the human health ranging from reproductive toxicity, hepatotoxicity, in increased cancers, and you name it, you have all the side effects. Then reduce. Definitely reuse of dialysis can reduce the plastic waste. But reprocessing leads to increased use of formaldehyde, parasitic acid, raising environmental concerns. We know there is increased risk of infections, decreased clearances with the reprocessing. So, which is a bigger evil at this point, we are still, it's not very clear. Then another way of decreasing the waste is a central dialysis uh, fluid delivery system. What we have here is every, uh, in every unit is a single patient delivery where each machine has a separate acid can and a bicap bag. In Japan, the most common delivery system is a centralized dialysis delivery where it is the reconstituted like in the upper up and it is sent via pipelines. So advantage is it avoids the use and disposal of plastic containers. We know huge numbers of plastic acid containers we have to order for this dialysis program. And also it drastically reduces the carbon, uh, carbon dioxide emissions with the transport. The second is how do you manage this waste? Uh, healthcare waste, 85% is non-infectious and 10% is infectious. The triage of carefully segregating is the core procedure of this dialysis waste management. Because here recyclable can be Transfer to appropriate settings, reusables should be personalized. And now the infected waste is specially treated. It is sterilized, it is incinerated. Special mechanisms are needed. Uh, for that, it comes with a cost. Like in Europe, it's two to seven euros per kg. In US, it's around five US dollars. And in my hospital, it comes at 17 rupees per bed. That is 3.5 lakhs I am uh, spending towards the waste disposal. So that is why the segregation is very important. If you don't segregate properly, the non-infectious waste also will be treated as infectious waste and thereby increasing the cost of disposal. So it's shown that a proper segregation can reduce around 95 kgs of hazardous waste per patient per annum, decreasing the or saving around 3 billion units and all this can be achieved by just one additional minute by the staff. And thus, the staff training and education is very, very important in this sector. Even the government of India has passed guidelines in March to, uh, 2016 where it has brought about color coding uh, bins to segregate waste where the infected plastic waste goes into the red, infected tissues goes into the yellow, and the needle sharps goes into the black. So the journey will be, after segregation, they are at the common point from which it is collected in special vehicles to the common biomedical waste disposable centers, which are usually within 75 kilometers from any centers. There it is treated with incineration, autoclaving, or shredding. Then it's sent to disposal by recycling or landfilling. Only 30% of plastic is recyclable, but it, it can be recycled into other forms of plastic. Uh, then sometimes it's used as a constituent of constructing material as a cement, sand, binder. It is used 
to lay roads like 0.7 tons of plastic is used to lay one kilometer of road and it is also used as an alternative source of energy. If the topic of energy from waste incineration, it generates about 38 megajoules per kg, which is almost equivalent to coal. Then the e-wastage, not, I didn't get much about, specifically about the hospital e-wastage, but all the electronic devices and components make e-waste. There are two problems here. Irresponsible disposable into landfills causes leaching of lead, cadmium, antimonies into the soil and ground, leading to their pollution. Second is, the CPUs have got uh, very precious elements like gold, palladium, copper. For that, there is very informal and we call, say, like black marketing sort of thing where they burn plastic to get that copper or they use an acid bar to extract these elements, they by releasing the, these harmful chemicals like PPBs, uh, BFRs, in that environment harming them as well as the society around. So the power. Power at the rate of 12 kilowatts per session. Uh, the power is mostly we are taking from the coal and other environmental damaging resources. Now renewable energies is the uh, need of the hour and Agar et al in his small unit he has uh, shown that solar assisted power is feasible and cost effective and he has shown that power consumption comes down by 91 percent and power cost by 76 percent after one year and return of investment can be very fast with the subsidized rates present now and uh, we can have a free power generation for the life of these solar arrays, that is around 20 to 30 years, very well maintained. And it is calculated that a patient dialyzing for 12 hours per week would require around 4.8 meters square solar array. So probably we should all rethink about this. Another uh, area where the energy can be lessened is heat exchangers, retrofitting of heat exchangers in our machines. What happens is, the incoming dialysate, the machine has to heat it to 37 degrees to further dialysis. So these heat exchangers, they transfer the heat from the outgoing effluent to the incoming dialysate fluid, something like a counter current mechanism, thereby saving energy. Other areas which we routinely know is choosing eco-friendly lighting, heating, automatic power shutdowns, all this can bring about saving power. Then home versus in-center dialysis. Definitely home dialysis have a lesser car carbon footprint because of the transportation requirement comes down. And in home dialysis, it was calculated for four hours, four days, four uh, thing, carbon footprint around 4.3. Uh, but with the available of newer machines like NX stage one, where the water requirement is only 12 liters, the carbon footprint even comes down by 70% around 1.8 tons. So what are the practices, green dialysis practices worldwide? UK definitely has taken a lead in this. Uh, NHS with the Green Nephrology Initiative, they have surveyed all the green units, um, all the dialysis units, they have mapped the carbon footprint and they have introduced green guidelines. So they have done all the measures which we have discussed before like uh, reuse water, reject water, reuse, installation of bailing machines, then upgradation of the RO plants, all this have led to saving around 12 million liters and uh, hundreds and thousands of European pounds. So what is the future? Dialysis is definitely not safe for the environment. We should explore the use of PVC free plastic dialysis products, alternative to PVCs like polyolefins, which are flexible and which are plas without plasticizers should be used and research on biodegradable plastics. There should be a need for a paradigm shift in the industrial design of disposable so that less wastage is generated, more are recyclable. And nowadays, and, uh, the machines with the so-called green design is the 6008 Fresenius machine. They have a cassette design for the extra carburetal circuits so that the weight of the disposable has come down. Uh, they have used material of polyolefins and they have an auto flow option in which the dialysis rate comes down, uh, can be reduced to 1%. And they have other smart designs like flexi, uh, flexi bags for the acid and the dialyzer FX Classic 80, which has uses polypropylene. So another is a sorbent technology, which helps hugely in reducing the water, where the overall six liters of water is reconstituted 
and uh, by, re by passing through a sorbent, a sorbent, pure water is generated and it is reconstituted and recirculated, saving tons of water. Then, to make the dialysis sustainable, ISN, ASN with the public-private partnership have come up with the numerous health initiatives like Kidney Health Initiatives, Kidney Innovation Accelerator, called Kidney X, where the focus is on development of innovative drugs, devices, and biologicals. And definitely artificial kidney is now on the horizon. A lot of incentives have been announced for that. And once, hopefully, if that comes, we can, uh, it can take over the dialysis. Another device, which innovation which has catched the uh, any significance is Allen's medical device, which has won the affordable dialysis prize recently by Vincent Garvey. What it does is, it uses a solar panel, water from any source is heated and made, made to steam, which is used to sterilize the bags and fill the peritoneal bags, and concentrate is added, and the dialysis is prepared in the pa with the patient in the patient's home itself. So it circumvents the carbon impact and cost of transporting thousands of liters of dialysate across and between the countries to patient annually. I think I'll skip this thing. So f to conclude, I'll just uh, uh, read out or I'll just uh, important things about UN released uh, global assessment report, which says that the health of ecosystem on which we are uh, depend on is deteriorating very rapidly. We have to take urgent and transformative change at every level. And dialysis has the largest footprint, and nephrology community has a responsibility and has to take constructive step towards this. So I, each, I hope and request each one of us go back, review our dialysis units with the so-called green vision, and take any steps to conserve water, electricity, and each small initiative by one individual unit collectively produces huge change and drop by drop makes an ocean. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. It was a, a comprehensive uh, uh, discussion about the topic which is more uh, relevant today. Yes. And uh, it, uh, actually, it, it should not be, have been discussed in a penultimate session in a conference. It uh, needs a special session uh, because uh, everything is becoming uh, green now, even the economy is uh, becoming green and uh, funding agencies talk about the carbon uh, score uh, before funding any project, etc. Um, as you told, the uh, climate change and management of uh, kidney disease, they have a bi-directional bi relation because uh, as you told, the uh, climate change causes kidney disease, but the management of kidney disease uh, creates more problem to the uh, climate. Uh, you talked about water, plastic, etc. A recent uh, Kidney International article uh, talk about uh, uh, Green K, that is uh, Global Environmental Evolution in Nephrology Kidney Disease, uh, about a, a nephrology working group ta talking about a sustainable management of kidney care. Lot of countries have come out with uh, uh, position statement, the societies yes. have come out with position statement. Uh, what do you think uh, uh, we stand uh, in India? What, where do we stand? And uh, what could be the uh, easily practice, uh, practicable uh, uh, methods uh, towards uh, going for a green dialysis? Sir, um, in fact, uh, after allotting this topic, I have, first time I have also realized that so much of waste is going on and also in my unit I we are uh, around uh, 175 dialysis per day where I think each one of us first thing is the water see in summers last few years we have been getting tanks of tankers of water so uh, to uh, run the dialysis unit uh, around each day I am wasting three four tankers of fluid into the drain I'm buying them and I'm draining so first thing I think we can, the RO plant, where I think the reject water can be again connected to the source tank, where it again passes through the different stages of uh, filtration and everything. I think that is the first step where I think we can save lot of, uh, uh, prevent lot of water wastage in first place. Second thing is um, reuse, it's happening, it's reuse, but the waste, water waste we are generating is much, much higher than we can flush it in our toilets or 
fly, use it as a gardening. So we have to reuse for our dialysis unit. Position is we have not yet started. Many of the units we have not yet started thinking and uh, redesigning our RO, uh, the dialysis unit in terms of this green dialysis. I think the, uh, each one has, according to their own, uh, uh, what do you call, requirements, what are the possibilities available, they have to start. But everything is terms of these three, water, power, and electricity. Uh, Madam, I have one question. What's your uh, thoughts on reusing dialysers in the era for single-use dialysis? As I discussed, it's very uncertain. But if we have a proper checks with a good reprocessor, automatic reprocessor, and a dedicated staff, we can, uh, we can, I will still uh, admit the reprocessing and reuse of dialysis is much advantageous because the carbon footprint for creating one, un one dialyzer with the carbon footprint of parasitic acid and, carbon, uh, and formaldehyde is this is 100 times more than the chemicals. It is there. So, if we, but again, we have a, we should have a very tight uh, guidelines for the reprocessing so that we should get away without infections and with adequate clearance. Good evening. Good morning. Dr. Saravanan from Erode. Uh, first of all, uh, dialysis as any form is having a very uh, bad footprint on the ecosystem. Yes. So to prevent that, uh, there are three points. That is one, uh, as you have rightly mentioned, we are already processing the uh, reject water to go to the supplies of the flush that is used in the hospitals. In that way, we can uh, definitely save many. But the problem is the TDS that comes out of the reject water. If the source water is uh, 300 TDS, the reject water is having a TDS of 600. So which may ha have some problems in the pipelines that you have, uh, that you use inside the hospitals, because most of us use concealed system for the entire hospitals. But until now, it is already three years we have been using this uh, reject water with a higher TDS. Our source water is having a um, 300 TDS. Our reject water is having 500 TDS. And uh, we are using this for the past three, uh, three years. But there are, definitely, there was no problems that is encountered. The next point for uh, electricity consumption, there should be a compelling uh, uh, order to all dialysis units to have a solar plant. Because uh, if we are going to buy the electricity, that is, uh, even now the electricity bills have been uh, re revised. So it is a must that we have to go to the uh, solar panels to have a lesser footprint on the uh, el electricity point. And then definitely in the third is the biomedical waste generation. This biomedical waste generation itself, it's a huge uh, economical uh, problem for all the hospitals that deals with this uh, dialysis. Because we are paying uh, as per the kilograms, and once we uh, do single use or reuse, the tubings that we just put it across, and it is increasing the biomedical waste. These are the three points that I would like to add. And I would like definitely uh, uh, thank the uh, scientific committee of Southern Chapters to include this, which is a very much a practical thing that has to be uh, enlightened to most of the nephrologists in the area. Thank you. Uh, I would like to congratulate you for the excellent talk. As he said, thank this you, should sir. have been uh, uh, held at the prime time, not at the last, at the last uh, lecture in this conference. Right from our childhood, we have been uh, told that you are wasting it like water. Correct. So wasting water has become uh, part of our life. I see roads being washed. I see wa they you wash four or five cars with so much of water. I think as uh, you said, the wars are going to be fought on water, not for uh, territory anymore. I think as a society, we have to take an initiative as a southern chapter itself, how we should uh, build our dialysis units, how to take care of the conservation of water. I think somebody, uh, we should uh, take it, uh, take, make the, take the lead and we should come out with a standard operating procedures yes, for sir. dialysis units. That is going to take us a long, long way. And uh, I wish you had talked something about uh, regeneration of the dialysate and ready system and all that. Yes, sir, so I have spoken. Have been, um, Sorbonne system, I have yeah, spoken. Yeah. But uh, because the bell I know, rang, I. Uh, I think, uh, as is, uh, even last time when did, we did our conference, we did follow certain uh, green initiatives. 
we avoided all plastic bottles we we avoided all the flex yes sir and we didn't use any plastic uh, bags so these are the, it may look very small initiatives but it's going to add up in the end yes sir so as a society i think we should take this initiative to come out with uh, some suggestions how to build dialysis units rightly put thank you sir professor gopalakrishnan sir that is a very good presentation Thanks. congratulations for that uh, exactly this is what is running in our, running through our minds conserve water conserve water conserve water because water is going to be a huge problem in the years to come because there has been exponential increase in the need for air is all that you mentioned with all the nice data and all that so what we did in our unit i don't know how many of you at least a few of you should have uh, and a witness the presentation the research paper presentation from our Institute of Nephrology, Madras Medical College for the uh, Tanker Award. Uh, the research was manipulating the temperature of the dialysate with the purpose of Saving. reducing the dialysate flow rate. We proved uh, a single cohort going through three different prescriptions. The KT over B that was achieved with slight increase in the dialysate temperature. but with the reduction in the dialysate flow rate to 300 ml per minute the same kt over we so with that we proved that if you adopt the strategy of manipulating the temperature of the dialysate 40% conservation of water unfortunately it was not adjudged as the best paper but still you know we are very convinced about it but a word of caution please go back and try in all your units the only concern we had is that how safe is it by manipulating the temperature increasing the temperature the anticipated complication can be hypotension so to start with exclude those patients who are hemodynamically unstable who have a tendency to go in for intradialytic hypotension and whose left ventricular ejection fraction is less than 40% you select a kind of a robust uh, patients with robust hemodynamics and then employ this strategy we are pretty convinced and we are going to write it up we are already uh, the uh, the publication is in the pipeline so we are pretty convinced about this that is the temperature to 38 38.5 and then you keep your dialysate flow rate not at 500 300 by this simple maneuver you can say 40% of water thank you we'll take one last question uh, thank you for wonderful uh, insights on uh, green dialysis uh, uh, you rightly mention uh, three major things Uh, plastic usage uh, water uh, and electricity so i would like to uh, emphasize here on our existing practice of using the hot disinfection uh, in the dialysis machine so usually 4 hours of dialysis consumes uh, uh, average minimum uh, electricity but the 20 minutes of hot disinfection utilizes the maximum power if you imagine the 20 machine dialysis unit Uh, all machines going undergoing hot disinfection how much heat it will generate and how much electricity it will consume correct so and your air condition efficiency also will reduce so it is 30 to 35% power consumption is more when you do the hot disinfection so my uh, i have seen some hospitals and some uh, dialysis units are using uh, more of a cold disinfection and some organic acids to decalcify and to Uh, like uh, sterilize the hydraulic system so that reduces ultimately the power as well as the water consumption because after hot disinfection you need more much uh, more water to cool uh, cool it down for taking the next patient so it is double utilization of ro water plus electricity so i uh, suggest to practice more of a organic acid based uh, decalcifying solutions and uh, some of paracetic acid based blend mixture to be developed for cleaning hydraulic system instead of using hot disinfection thank you so much yes sir very additional point yeah thank you sir okay so last i am professor rajagopal from indian statistical institute congrats dr dhanalakshmi for opening on green dialysis i would like to stress only two points that in the cross sectional domain <coughs> where i have been also exposed to analytical science it was a great challenge in textile industry where effluent treatment plant helped a lot in making multiple turnover earlier it was a threat now it has become a ruling that the grants are given for green 
sustainability certificate. In Europe and also in Dubai, many, many corporates are coming out with the sustainability certificate and it is being definitely given grant if it is a part of the research science. And I, did, I do work with one or two sustainability certificates projects. And two, it is also there in jewelry industry also, sustainability certificate. Third, now I find it is there in high civil engineering construction also. In all these three, this sustainability certificate has come and it is high time that Dr. Dhanalakshmi talked about the green dialysis, not only for conserving non-renewable -renew energy, also non-renewable energy do reduce the cost. Yes. In one of the industries, the cost per power was seven rupees, it reduced to three rupees. And BOD, COD level in the effluent treatment plant reduced and it enhanced the turnover of the company from as low as 55 lakhs to 2 crores. Uh, so definitely th it helps Thank you, a lot. sir. Your point is well taken. Thank ah, you so much. Thank you. Uh, 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 thank you, madam, for highlighting us three R's, which are the cornerstones of green uh, dialysis. Thank you. Thank you. May I request the chairpersons to hand over the memento to our speaker?